can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See lights like a beach if you find the same right now. I'm feeling like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here. I am the founder and host of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders. This episode is brought to you by Rise 25. At Rise 25, we help businesses give to and connect to their dream 100 relationships. Uh, How do we do that? We help you run your podcast. We are an easy button for an organization or business to launch and run your podcast. I've been podcasting for over a decade now. You know, for me, the number one thing in my life is relationships. I'm always looking at ways to give to my best relationships. And I found no better way to do that than to profile the people and the companies I most admire, feature them on my podcast and shout from the rooftop. So what they're working on and what they're doing. So if you've thought about starting a podcast, you should. If you have questions, you can go to rise25.com or email us support at rise25.com to learn more. Now check out today's episode. I love learning from the best people in the industry and, um, you know, Rich Walker is one of the best people in the industry, um, in, in customer service and SaaS. And so we ask his, uh, help and support, um, and give feedback from our dashboard, but he's spitting some gems of wisdom. So Rich, I'm going to let you take it away on some of the things that you think about, um, when it comes to adoption and and just the list in your mind, like what, what do you think about? Yeah. So I look, one of my favorite things to do is steal concepts from other industries and other product types and business types. And I'm in SaaS software as a service. So when we think about how do you get somebody to adopt your product, we're thinking in software terms, right? But you have to think about it in more concrete terms or, you know, maybe how a person walks into your store So what we do in our software is we think about what are the milestones somebody has to accomplish to become an adopted functional user, meaning they got enough value in those steps that they say to themselves, I want to keep using this product. And then what are the additional steps they have to take to become a super user or raving fan where they've gotten so much value because they did all of the configurations or they did all of the extra steps that they're now so adopted, they'll never leave your product and they'll start telling other people about its value. So part of that problem is you've got to get a user to go from point A to B to C to D so that they become that user. And what are those steps in your business? And then how do you incentivize them or inspire them to take those steps? So I love like what you guys do with Rise 25 to help me become a podcaster. You help me think about who would be on my show. And that's a very, very important first step. But you know what really made me a podcaster? Actually doing it, (laughs) right? And so there's another step. You have to actually go out and do the podcast. But how do I become a better user is I do it over and over and again. And I overcome my fears and I overcome the challenges. And you guys support that. And you provide help and you have resources for that. So I think in any business, you've got to think through what are those milestones and steps. I want to go further into this. And if someone's watching this on video or listening to it, we're at uh, Rich's uh, site here, uh, quickforms.com. Adoption and super user. Can you break down that? What do you think of? who? What are the, you, you mentioned, there's things that people need to do that you know they need to do to, for adoption and then what they need to do for, for super user. Let's just use quickforms as an example. What are some sure. of those things? So what will happen is somebody will sign up for a free trial of our product. Signing up for a free trial does not make them a user. All that means is they've signed up and we have to look, did they actually log in the first time? That's the first step. Did they log in? The second step we want to know is, did they generate a form? And there are other steps in between there to get to that point. But if they never generate a form, they never got the value out of the product. And so it happens. People will sign up. And they'll log in the first time. And in the next two weeks during the trial, never log in again. We have to ask ourselves, how do we inspire them to log in a second, third, fourth, fifth time? And why are they not logging in? Let's say they do log in, but they never go to the step of connecting to their database, their source of data, CRM. If you don't have data to put on a form, generating a form is not as valuable when it's blank. There's still value. But the real value is putting data on the document. We have to measure, did they actually set up a CRM? 
And are they using it? So we want to see they set up the connection and then generated a form. A third step that we think leads to creating a lot of value and therefore creating a real user is setting up what we call form bundles. Typically, if you're doing a transaction, it's not just one form, it's three or four or five together that you have to do. A new account form, an account transfer form, an order ticket, what have you. We found, and we've had this form bundling or form grouping feature for 20 years at this point, we have found that is one of the most valuable tool sets or features of our product. And when a customer does, does put that in place, they see a lot more value. Therefore, they're more likely to stay as an adopted user. And, and we can keep going. I mean, there's other things that will happen. But what we also look for is, I would say, in a, in a more highly adopted or super user, did they add other users to their account? Did they see other people get involved and are they training them? Did they set up e-signature because they're going to another level? Um, did they set up favorites and favorite companies that they're using more and more frequently? Are they saving forms in our system and getting that value out of it? So we're looking for those levels of adoption and making sure it's working. And look, I'm not promising we're great at it. We're always trying to make it better because getting that kind of reporting is hard. But those are the things we think about. Yeah, I mean, first of all, thinking about it, you know, at least I just, I'll speak for myself. I'm not always thinking about these things. So the fact that you are, um, you're, you're, you're a step ahead of, of me and most people, I would say. But how, what, how are some of the things, how do you get people through those steps? Like to get them, like you said, you, from free user to a, you know, adoption to super user, how do you get them through some of those adoption steps um, so they don't get stuck on, well, okay, you didn't log in, right? And you get them to the next adoption step and the next, what are some of the things you have in place to get them through those steps? You know, Jeremy, this is really the core, I think, of our business and the, our company culture as well. And it's to create an excellent customer experience. Nobody likes bad software. <laughs> I, I, one of our cultural tenets is the software has to be so easy to use, it doesn't require a user guide. That means it has to be simple, has to be intuitive, has to be obvious. <clears throat> so when you think about how do you build an excellent customer experience, it doesn't have to be software, by the way. It could be how did somebody get greeted when they walked into your place of business? How did they experience your customer service phone call? Think about all the different sites you go to where you fill out some form to get contacted and they never contact you or it goes to spam. Well, what if you said, hey, I just received a lead. I'm going to call them. And now you treat them really well with a phone call immediately. Another example, my wife just started a business called Dr. Wayless, and it's a, a weight loss clinic. And so when somebody goes through the, the AI-driven chat bot to qualify them, she watches it. If somebody's falling out halfway through, she picks up the phone and calls them and says, hey, I want to help you get the answers you need. And so when you think about experience, how do you build a better experience? You are automatically leading yourself to solve these problems because you start to ask yourself, how do I feel as a customer or a user of that system? <clears throat> there's lots of techniques to solve those types of problems, but you first have to identify what is the problem? Where do people fall out of this? Was our login process too hard? Maybe. Did they feel it wasn't secure enough? Maybe we have to show them other security methods because we have multi-factor authentication. I, those are the types of things you think about, but I believe the mindset of having an excellent customer experience is what leads it. Yeah, I love that question of where are people falling out? Because once you solve that, then there's another place where they're going to fall out and then another place they're going to fall out and you have to keep chipping away at that. Right. 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 I don't think it's a never ending thing. You know, sales companies, or people in the sales organization do this through the funnel, right. And marketing too, we bring people in and then they fall out. Why are they falling out? Why are they not converting? It's the same thing in your customer experience and how, how your product is usable or not usable. And I will argue that any product can be applied to this idea of a better customer experience. In fact, I hope hope a lot of people do it. I'd like to see better customer experiences out there. The last question I have, which first of all, thank you, um, is about super users. Some tips to move um, client or customer to a super user. And I, I just, I want to encourage anyone, like we were just having a conversation, actually Rich was being really generous and giving feedback on our um, uh, only client dashboard that we have. And I just encourage you, you know, anyone, if you're having an impromptu conversation with an amazing person, he was just started talking about 
his breadth of experience with adoption and users. I'm like, we should be recording this. So, you know, Rich, if you're on the phone with someone or anyone listening with someone and there just sounds amazing, just be like, hey, let, we should we should capture this so other people can learn from it. So super user. And then, you know, I want people to check out quickforms.com. You can see we're looking at it here. What's your what's your wife's website that we should give a shout out to? It, it, it's based in Texas, but it's drwayless, drwayless.com. Dr. Way less. So only if you're in Texas, if not, you can still check it out and probably learn something. Maybe you know someone there, or maybe she's going to have some kind of course that I can buy at some point. Eventually, so it, it, even, the, uh, even if I'm clinic, right. <laughs> even if I'm not uh, there, but check that out too. So some tips um, and some thoughts super on user. super users. Yeah. So I, I go back to somebody's book and I can't remember which one it was, but which was how do you create raving fans? Because you want people out there, you know, spilling the gospel about your product and your services. So when we think about super user, I think of somebody who has gained so much value that they're just overwhelmed with joy, excitement, and want to share it with others. How do you get to that point? Number one, you have to understand what is value to them. Not as what value to you, what is value to them? What, what problem are you solving for them? And how big of a problem is it that you're delivering on? And there's a lot of people who have forms problems. A lot of people don't like filling out forms. Oh, well, pretty much everybody hates filling out forms. And we get users who get in here and they just do their job and that's good enough for them. But then we get these other users who I've been at conferences and they come up to me and I feel like an author signing a book and they're like, oh my gosh, you've changed my life. How did I change your life? Well, I went from 40 hours to four hours a week filling out forms because your software made it that much easier. And now I get to do more things with my life. So here's something to think about, Jeremy. My software saved them time and made it easier to do their process. But the benefit was they got to do what's more important to them in their life. So the raving fan for me is somebody who gets more value than just what my product did. It enabled them to do more. And, and really the core of our business is to empower others to do their best work, which is not paperwork. So how do you do that for your customer? I, and honestly, what you guys have helped me do with my podcast is amazing. And I'll share a story with you. Um, I have used this podcast to network and meet people and connect with people like customers and partners. And it's been awesome to build this kind of rapport. But to go further, I met somebody at a conference. I thought he'd be a great guest. I invited him. We talked over email a few times, lost touch because of email. He followed up saying, hey, I really do want to schedule this. I said, great. By the way, I have a new product coming out. Would you like to see it? Boom, he booked. He booked a meeting with me. I had no other opportunity to book him into a meeting to see this product other than the fact that we were dialoguing on the podcast. So I'm therefore a raving fan of doing podcasts because it has helped me connect with an audience and build potential growth into my business. So that's what I think about for you guys. How do you build a raving fan? You help somebody see the actual value and potential of a podcast by getting them in the routine and the structure and building the platform to do it so efficiently and effectively that it becomes easier and easier and therefore they keep doing it. Maybe I just love it, but I mean, I'm reaping the rewards. Love it. Everyone check out quickforms.com. Also go to their podcast page. As Rich preaches, he, he lives it. The Customer Wins podcast right here. You can see it. Uh, Rich, who's a good guest for you? Who should reach out to you if they're interested in being a guest? I love to talk to people who are passionate about building the best customer experience and really serving their clients. So yeah, there, there's all sorts of companies and I love talking to owners and founders, but I will talk to director of training. It doesn't matter to me if they're truly passionate about how to build the best experience for their customers. And here's something else that's interesting. My audience is typically financial services. That, that's where my product lives and that's where my customer base is. But I love bringing in people outside the industry to give totally different perspective. Like here's Shelly. She is the CEO of Alamo Drafthouse Cinemas. What does that have to do with financial services? Everything, everything. They have the best experience of going to movie theaters. And so you can learn from that. I love it. Rich? I want to be the first one to thank you. Thanks for the impromptu interview and, and playing along. Uh, everyone check out quickforms.com. My pleasure, Jeremy. Thank you. What I got, you can't buy. 